Hi, everyone, and welcome to week five. Yay, we are at our halfway point. Um, so this week, we will talk, be talking about the genres of YA literature. Um, and some of you will be familiar with this content because we did touch on it a little bit in week two. Um, so just for housekeeping purposes, midterm papers are due at the end of this week. I have been answering questions via email. Um, if you're still having questions, please email me and let me know. Um, there's no discussion this week so that everyone can focus on their midterm paper. Um, also make sure that you are working on the final project um, URLs. I've received a few, but not all. Um, so, you know, make sure that you're starting to work on that content because you can use the content from the discussions to um, post it to your URL. And it's going to be easier if you're doing it week by week versus if you're trying to do it all at one time. Um, so let's start our discussion, genres um, of YA literature. Um, this week, we're doing a deeper dive into the genres, and I'm going to be providing you specific examples um, in the slideshow um, so that you can use them and add them to your toolkit, um, your professional toolkit for use. Um, so this is going to be relevant for you as you start to do reader's advisory, um, and we're going to go uh, in depth into what reader's advisory for teens should look like starting next week. So this is our segue into that. Um, you can recommend these specific titles or use them to create read-alikes um, as you provide resources for your patrons. Okay, so here are some of the most popular genres. You have adventure, coming of age, fan fiction, uh, fantasy, graphic novels, comics or mangas, historical fiction, horror, humor, mystery, romance, science fiction, and true crime. So you'll notice a couple of newer genres, which would be uh, fan fiction and potentially true crime. For those of you who are not familiar, fan fiction is where a member of a fandom or a fan group will say, um, creates new fiction based on their fandom storyline, right? Um, so you'll see there were a lot of Twilight fan fiction um, generated after that movie was released and the fans kind of wrote like their alternative endings or their alternative scenarios, or they did a deep dive into characters that were not really... Um, addressed in the novels, for example. Um, also true crime, which we know true crime is literally what it says, true crime. So stories about um, murder or killers, et cetera. Um, and the, it's given the full perspective and goes into the details. Um, so that's what true crime is. Okay. So let's talk about um, classics. Right here, I have some um, examples of YA classics and how do we define what a classic, classic is. Classics are defined as literature that can stand the test of time, meaning that it has enduring influence or relevance. Um, it makes lasting connections with the reader um, and it generates uh, never ending discourse, meaning we talk about it constantly or consistently. Scholars do research on it. That's the never ending discourse component. It has a memorable protagonist and it's profound and internal insights into the human condition. And that's that's one important um, component, right? The profound insight making readers think um, making readers consider different things about the human condition. Um, and it's interesting no matter the time period. So we have some examples. We have Harry Potter series, um, Diary of a Part-Time Indian, The Giver by Lois Lowry. Um, we have Outsiders. We have We'd See Bat, um, Forever, Judy Bloom, Monster, Walter Dean Myers. Buried Onions. And like I said, you will notice um, some of these titles already from our timeline as we talked about the historical evolution of YA literature. 
So coming of age, also known as the Bildungsroman. And um, coming of age novels are usually about a normal process of a child growing up and transitioning into adulthood. Um, they focus on the individual finding their identity, they undergo a major change, and this change can be physical, emotional, or both. And the protagonists are usually characters that readers can easily identify with. So one of those examples that comes to my mind immediately is Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, which I did not list. Um, but here are some more contemporary titles. We have Freak the Mighty, Whirligig, Annie on My Mind, and again, Monster by Walter Dean Myers. So now we come to romance and teen romance is um, lighter than adult romance, which we talked about in week two um, when we went through the history. We did that comparative, if you recall. Um, so romance is often interwoven with another genre, um, such as the coming of age, and then the romance will be the secondary theme. Um, and older teens... 16 and over tend to be more attracted to the adult romance writers versus the YA titles. So let's look at some of the examples. We have To All the Boys I've Loved Before, um, which uh, was turned into a movie, um, Eleanor and Park, and Simon versus the Homeo Sapiens Agenda. So those are just some examples of um, romance. Oops, I need to go. My slides are getting crazy, guys. Um, okay. So next up, we have mystery. Um, teens enjoy mysteries because they enjoy the mental challenge of figuring out the solution to a problem. Um, mystery tends to be blended with other genres for YA fiction to offer the element of an additional twist or appeal to the stories. So um, we have One of Us is Lying, which also became a series. Um, Pretty Little Liars turned into an HBO show. Um, a Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And um, I provide you with the authors so that, again, you can build these and put them in your toolkit or you can build out read-alikes as you're searching for content. Science fiction and fantasy. Um, science fiction stories are often the what-if ideas um, and it's blended with adventure tales. Science fiction is usually focused on the future, although it can sometimes do flashbacks or backtrack to the past. Um, it can be difficult to categorize these stories, books, movies, TVs, as, as science fiction or fantasy because there's a, a fine line between the two. Um, science fiction usually incorporates some form of human design technology, whether it be real meaning existing or imagined. Um, fantasy also involves magic or paranormal occurrences, but can include a scientific element or component to it. Um, the Harry Potter series, which we're all really familiar with, um, led to an explosion of stories in books, movies, and TVs. TV, sorry. So here are some um, sci-fi slash fantasy novels um, that are might be a little less popular or that you may be a little less familiar with, right? Um, the Court in, of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass, The List by Patricia Ford, and Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. Um, I tried to diversify, right? Make sure that you guys have a full um, panel of diverse materials as well. So let's talk about the popular subgenres. Um, and subgenres are exactly what they say, subgenres. Um, so they can fall under, for example, you can have um, <clears throat> romance, historical romance, um, but the purpose is just looking at these a little bit more in depth so that we can, so that you can make recommendations again um, as you're 
working with patrons, right? Um, so historical fiction, we have The Book Thief as an example or Codename Verity as an example, and they're similar to adult horror historical fiction, um, and they're set in the past and often with the context of an important uh, historical event. So for example, World War II um, would be an example. On the adult side, you have Schindler's List, right? Um, similar content, but that's the parallel. They're both historical fiction. Um, Schindler's List is more so an adult title, while The Book Thief is more the YA title. Um, so for contemporary, we have the examples of Wonder, if anyone's read Wonder, um, and The Sky is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson, and Wonder is written by R.J. Palacio. Um, and so why contemporary novels are set in the real world and focus on the characters as they go through some sort of growth, right? So similar to the coming of age, um, but they're set in the real world. The characters are often high school aged and go through a variety of problems related to their specific stage in life. Um, and then we have paranormal. So the examples I have are um, Twilight by Stephanie Meyer and uh, Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. And the paranormal novel features paranormal characters such as vampires and werewolves mixing with human characters. So that would be like Bella would be the human character. Um, they are mostly set around a romance between the paranormal character and the human character. Um, and then we have fairy tale retellings, which um, is a newer genre. And it's actually, you know, it's really kind of exciting to see these stories being retold in a format that um, young adults can more so relate to you um, and kind of turning them on their head in a way. Um, so the examples I have are Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge and A Court of Thorn and Roses by um, Sarah J. Mass as well. Um, so it's currently a popular YA genre um, and it takes the main points of popular fairy tales and reworks them into a new story. Um, and it can be set within modern times or it can be used to create an entirely new fantasy world. Um, and they also take the form of what if. Uh, I also like, there's a retelling of Alice in, not Alice in Wonderland, I'm sorry. The Wizard of Oz, which doesn't really constitute itself as um, a fairy tale, but Dorothy, the Dorothy Must Die series where Dorothy actually becomes the villain and the Wicked Witch is not, uh, well, yeah, kind of a hero, right? Um, so the young lady has to go into the land of Oz and kind of defeat Dorothy and the lion and the tin man um, because they're doing things that are destructive. The power of uh, Oz has gone to their head. Um, so those are the kinds of interesting stories that you can parallel um, with the 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 older story, right? So you can take um, Dorothy Must Die and parallel that with um, The Wizard of Oz and have a full conversation. Um, I love stories where it's kind of like the anti-hero. It's like, you know, the villain becomes the kind of good guy. Um, and that's kind of like, for a really specific example, that's like Deadpool. Um, with the Marvel comics. So there's those, those similarities. Um, there's also Marissa Meyer's Heartless, uh, which gives the backstory of the Queen of Hearts character from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Um, so that's another good one that you can utilize. Um, I put the web resource, um, which is like the writer's the ultimate guide to um, YA fiction, um, because they do do also more more of a deep dive into some of the other subgenres. Um, we know genres and storytelling are infinite, right? Um, but there may be. I would recommend that you take a look at it um, because you want to be as familiar as possible with all of the genres so that when you get the questions from the students and the parents and the teachers that come into your respective space, you can answer them. 
adequately. Um, this lecture was short um, because I know that you guys have midterms that you need to work on. Um, so I encourage you all to spend this week immersing yourself in your midterm projects. Like I said, reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, and I hope that y'all have a wonderful week. For those of you who are sports fans, enjoy the Super Bowl. Have a good one.